Aviso Manual. Navigating the Aviso S ultrasound platform from Quantel Medical. This video will introduce the Aviso S ultrasound device from Quantel Medical, covering some particulars of its hardware and software and demonstrating the use of key features. The Aviso S is a compact, comprehensive ultrasound platform with a user friendly touchscreen interface. The module can be used for B and A scan or biometry and standardized echography, and ultrasound biomicroscopy, or UBM. The Aviso S is designed to be connected to a laptop or desktop computer where exams, images, and reports are displayed. Image acquisition can be controlled via the computer or touchscreen. We start by turning on the main unit via the power switch on the back. Once the unit is switched on, the connected computer should automatically open the Aviso S software application. The software can also be accessed via the Aviso S shortcut icon on the computer's desktop. The Aviso S unit comes with an 8 MHz A scan probe, a 10 MHz B scan probe, a CD ROM containing the software and user manual, a foot switch, a 250 milliliter tube of gel, power and USB cables, and a probe holder. Three probe connections are located on the front of the unit one for an A scan probe one for a 10 MHz B-scan probe, and a third for the high-frequency B-scan probes. Red dots on the probe connectors and on the Aviso S module help guide proper insertion. Upon starting the Aviso software for the first time, the Physician file screen will be displayed automatically. Thereafter, selecting the New Physician icon will open up this menu. At least one physician profile must be entered in order to begin using the Aviso S device. In addition to the physician's name and address, various default parameters can be set based on physician preferences. From this menu, default folders can be set for saving images in JPEG format, Cineloop files in AVI format, and reports in PDF format. And a default length, up to 40 seconds, of Cineloop recording can be established. Certain particulars of reports, such as the number of images per sheet, specific notes or comments to be included, can be set from this menu as well. For B-scan mode, it is possible to set the physician's preferred gain, dynamic, and time gain control parameters. For biometry, the ultrasound velocities for various tissue types and artificial lens and vitreous materials are set by default, but more can be added. The default gain, dynamic, technique, immersion or contact, and mode, manual or automatic, can also be configured for biometry from this menu. Up to four IOLs can be calculated at a time, and defaults can be specified for the individual physician from the IOL tab on this menu. Once a physician has been entered into the system and saved, by pressing the Save icon, a new patient can be added via the New Patient icon. Name and address, keratometry data, and other important history details can be input and saved. A returning patient can be found via the Patient icon, searching with the initial letter of the patient's last name in the Patient Name field. Alternatively, typing a star or percent sign into this field will bring up a list of patient names to choose from. When the All Physicians checkbox is selected, this list will include patients input by all physician users. Once a patient has been selected, his or her previous exams and IOL calculations can be viewed from the pull-down menus. Reports can be viewed by double-clicking. On the computer unit, clicking on the Scan icon opens the examination screens. Via this menu or the touchscreen interface, prepare for a scan by first selecting the eye to be examined using the eye icon, OS or OD. Then, select the ultrasound technique using one of the three icons, A, B10, or BHF, toggling through until the correct probe is displayed. Access biometry mode via the Biometry A icon. Once selected, we can set other parameters for the scan either through the touchscreen interface or via the computer screen and mouse. On the touchscreen, we can toggle the green mode button just beneath the probe menu to choose the depth displayed, 40 mm or 80 mm. The mode button is found on the left-hand side of the computer screen view. The lens status, phacic, aphacic, or pseudophacic, can be selected by touching the green arrows surrounding the default, phacic, in the middle of the touchscreen. Just below that, the technique, immersion, or contact can be selected. Finally, in the bottom left-hand corner of the screen, the acquisition mode, 
Manual Auto or Auto Plus Save can be set. Alternatively, these options can be customized via the drop-down menus at the top of the acquisition screen on the computer. We can adjust the gain by turning the gray knob at the front of the Aviso S device or by using the plus and minus signs on either side of the gain readout in decibels on the left-hand side of the computer screen. Using the mouse or touching the double arrow MM icon at the bottom center of the touchscreen interface, which changes to orange from green when selected, allows the user to adjust the position of the markers on the ultrasound readout using the gray knob. Then, activating the IOL icon on the right-hand side of the screen allows the amotropia value to be selected. Selecting the B10 icon on the touchscreen opens up B mode and indicates that the 10 MHz B scan probe will be used. The depth displayed, 40 mm or 60 mm, can be selected once again using the green mode button on the touchscreen or the left-hand menu on the computer screen. Once the scan is in progress, the vertical and horizontal arrows on the touch screen can move the position of the image on the acquisition screen, and the plus and minus magnifying glass icons zoom in and out. In B mode, the gain can be adjusted either using the gray knob on the Aviso S device or using the mouse to interact with the gain field on the left-hand side of the image acquisition screen. Selecting the Synchrodyne checkbox ensures that the dynamic, Contrast changes in tandem with gain to optimize image quality. Biometry in B mode is available with the 10 and 20 MHz B scan probes and can be initiated in either case by selecting the green Bio B button. Likewise, while using either of these two probes, the examiner can opt to add an A scan cross vector over the scan readout by selecting the green and orange CV icon on the touch screen or computer screen. Once the CV icon is selected, the arrows or plus and minus icons next to the CV icon will move the position of the cross vector line. This can also be done by using the mouse to left click the line. It will turn red once selected, moving it to the desired position and left clicking again to set it in place. To use a LIN 25 MHz probe, select the HFP icon and toggle until it says LIN 25. The 25 MHz probe is ready to use as delivered from the manufacturer. By toggling the same icon, the LIN 50 MHz UBM probe can be selected. It is critical to ensure that this probe has been properly prepared and filled with distilled water prior to use. The depth, mode, for both of the linear probes is 20 mm. The Aviso S Cineloop tool records a sequence of scan images, up to 100 images, which can be reviewed by the examiner in a continuous loop by pressing the loop icon to start and stop, or one by one using the arrow icons surrounding the loop icon. If desired, the keyboard can also control the CineLoop functions. C starts and stops the CineLoop, B selects the previous image in sequence, and N selects the next image in sequence. By default, the CineLoop function is set to capture 100 images. The Aviso S software is equipped with various image processing and annotation tools which can be accessed after scans have been captured by selecting the Tools icon on the touch screen or the right-hand menu on the computer screen. The Tools icon opens a window of tool options, including Caliper, Area, Marker, and Angle. Selecting the Caliper function allows the examiner to measure the distance between points on the image. The resulting distance will be displayed in the Tools window. Similarly, selecting the area function allows the examiner to measure the area of a selected part of the image. Again, using the mouse pointer and left clicking, the examiner can indicate a series of points to define the area in question, right clicking when all the points have been selected to confirm the area. The result, again, will be displayed in the tools window. Measurements of the angle in a UBM image can be carried out similarly. Comments can be entered into the comment field adjacent to each tool in the result window. Frequently used comments can be added to the Comments Shortcuts list. The complete list of Comments Shortcuts is listed at the bottom right of the image acquisition screen. When added to a given image, these comments are displayed on image printouts or reports. Any frozen image can be captured and saved by right-clicking on the image, which will display a menu of options including Export to JPEG. From this menu, images can also be copied, deleted, sent via email, or integrated into a report. The Aviso S software offers a number of options for generating and exporting reports. The simplest form of a report is a single image, which can be printed using a Windows printer, a DICOM printer, or a video printer. 
An IOL report can be generated for one or both eyes. Once an IOL calculation has been performed and saved, selecting Preview can generate an IOL report for both eyes. Selecting Report Creator from the top right-hand corner of the computer screen displays thumbnails of all the saved images from both eyes of a given patient. Clicking on any image adds it to the report. A total of eight scans can be displayed per page. From the Report Creator page, the examiner can get a zoomed-in view of an image that has been added to the report by double-clicking on it. A single image can be removed from the report by right-clicking on the image and selecting the Remove option. Comments can be added to the report by double-clicking the fields at the bottom. With the key features of the AvisoS hardware and software in mind after this initial review, we will now turn to the top five most frequently asked questions about this device. 1. How do I install a new probe to my Aviso system? Every new probe comes with installation instructions written on the probe file card, and each probe has specific parameters. Follow these steps to install a new probe. Insert the probe's corresponding CD-ROM in the drive and press the Add button. Automatically, a window will open displaying the probe file. Select the probe file and press Open. The probe will then be added to the installed probe list. Note, only one probe setup of each type can be used with a given system. If an A probe is added in the field, it must be calibrated for use with contact technique. Once added, select the probe from the list and check its calibration on the test block. Procedure and specifications can be found in the user manual. If a probe of the same type is already installed, you'll need to suppress it. That is, you can visualize only one A probe, one B10 probe, one B20 probe, etc. 2. How do I look up a previous scan or report on an existing patient? Answer. A. Recall the patient name from the patient screen. B. Click on the Scan button at the top of the screen. C. A drop-down menu of exams arranged by date will appear on the upper right-hand side of the scan screen. D. Select one of the dates listed, and the image from that date will appear as thumbnails in the preview area on the right. E. Click once on any of the small images to view it in the center of the screen. F. Alternatively, after selecting a patient's name, select Info and then the History tab to view and recall patient reports. Note that only images previously added to a formal report are shown under the History tab, while all saved images can be found via the Scan menu and drop-down date selection described above. 3. How do I get a printout of just one eye or both eyes on an IOL calculation report? To produce a printout of one eye's IOL calculation, A. Create a new patient and enter the keratometry data. B. Select one eye, OD or OS, and perform the biometry exam. C. Once complete, click the IOL icon and inside the new window, click on the IOL tab. D. When the IOL tables are displayed, click on Report. E. For the printout, click Print and select your preferred printer. 4. I'm getting the binary error data stream or unhandled exception on my computer. This is likely due to a corrupt patient database, frequently caused by first last name conflicts or a deleted name from the records. It can sometimes be resolved by finding the correct name and resaving, or deleting the incorrect name. A new installation of the Aviso software may also be a solution. In some cases, you may need to send the unit to Quantel for database repair. 5. The Aviso module or console will not connect to the computer. Turn the Aviso module off, then turn it back on. Turn the computer on first, allowing the software to start up. This can take a while. Then, turn on the Aviso module. If this does not help, the drivers must be reset. A Quantel technician is required for this. Quantel Medical's exemplary ultrasound technology has brought multiple innovations to ultrasound specialists worldwide since 1993. We hope you've found this demonstration of the Aviso S helpful. For more information about this technology and Quantel's complete range of diagnostic ultrasound products, please visit www.quantel-medical.com.